Good morning and welcome to St John's Church here in the Ellens for our online Eucharist as we celebrate the third Sunday of Epiphany. We continue our journey through the season of Epiphany as we also continue our journey through this third lockdown. With all that that means to us as a church and as a nation with the necessary restrictions to keep us safe. So as we gather virtually for this Eucharist, we acknowledge the fellowship we share with each other across our communities, holding in our prayers those not able to be with us online. So welcome to you in our gathering now this morning from homes across our benefice and beyond. As always, the service sheet is available to view or download from our website. During this service, we're going to hear Jane Parsons and Pam Bentley who are doing our readings, Peter Mann who is preaching, and Angela Sewell who is leading our intercessions. As we come to worship, let us now pause a moment and be still. We meet in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe. From the rising of the sun till its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Today we continue our journey through the season of Epiphany and hear the third of the three great revealings that we hear during this season each year. Three weeks ago we celebrated the visit of the Magi to the Christ Child with the presentation of their gifts. Then we celebrated the baptism of Christ with a wonderful moment when Jesus came up from the waters and the heavens were torn open. After a look at the story of Philip and Nathaniel last week with Philip saying to Nathaniel, come and see, today we hear the third great revealing, the story of the first miracle of Jesus at the wedding in Cana. In our first reading today from the book Revelation, we hear a heavenly wedding being described where the blessing is not reserved for the principal participants but is instead extended to every invited guest. Then we hear the story of the wedding as told by the evangelist John. Jesus understands that social ruin is impending and responds with overwhelming generosity that turns disaster into blessing. As we continue to reflect on the great stories of God revealing God's self through the life of Jesus, we come to acknowledge those things in our lives which are not right with God as we offer our prayers of penitence. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify our people as his own. Let us confess our sin. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's forgiven people, we praise God as we say the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, almighty God, God and Father, we, we worship you, we, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Grateful for the glory revealed to us through God made flesh, let us pray. 
God of all mercy, your Son proclaimed good news to the poor, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit, and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations, and believed in throughout the world. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. A quotation from the Gospel we've just heard. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. One of the side effects of the Christmas we've just had is that we've got lots of food left over. In our case, because the family weren't able to join us, and it does mean we've got a lot of Christmas cake. Now, that gives me a not very sophisticated chance to uh, compare Christmas cake to the gospel we've just heard. 
Now, just think about it. A Christmas cake has lots of ingredients that come together to make up a delicious whole. And the story of the wedding at Cana of Galilee has plenty of intriguing ingredients that come together to make a glorious and happy story. Let's, let's look at some of those ingredients. Obviously the story is important for St John because he calls it the first of the signs, the way of unlocking who Jesus is. Significantly, it all took place in a very human event, a wedding, indeed a landmark event for the family, but one that went wrong. Cue embarrassment and distress. Now a wedding could last several days. But how on earth did the wine give out? Then we have the curious collision of the practical and the spiritual. Because Jesus' mother Mary tells him about the disaster and she gets a very curt reply. What's that got to do with me? My hour hasn't yet come. Of course, when John recounted the story of the wedding, he knew all about the events of the end of Jesus' life, the cross and the resurrection. And what he tells us, when he tells us rather that Jesus says from the cross, it is finished, John wants us to see this as a unique act of God's self-giving love. That is what Jesus is building up to. A real event of world-shattered significance on Calvary. But that doesn't mean that love is only there on the cross. So on a much lesser but still important scale, Jesus does do something about the wine at the feast. A sign that God's love is not limited to one event, but is every day as well. Because that is what God is. As John will later say in one of his letters, God is love. Another ingredient is a sheer quantity of water in the jars. And as we will see, this is very important. Anyway, the water becomes wine, but no one apart from the servants has any idea what's going on. And it all leads to the memorable picture of amazement of the quality of the wine. It all underlines with vividness how unique and special Jesus is. And what he has to offer is the best we can have in life. So there we have the ingredients. And like with a Christmas cake, they all add up to a glorious whole. So let's zoom out and see what the whole passage might be saying. Now we can start theologically. The first readers would have picked up very well that this story is about more than wedding and wine. It is about the progress of history. So we can read it together with our passage from Revelation that we heard earlier. People associated banquets, and particularly wedding banquets, with the culmination of history. And it all ends with happiness and peace and glory and being with God. The marriage feast of the Lamb, as the writer puts it. That's why in church we keep going on about hope. Sin and evil are not the last word. Love is the winner. However, the story of the wedding at Cana is also much more personal. Go back to those jars of water. They're there to do religious things with. They're about dotting every I and crossing every T in the way that we sometimes do with our faith that makes it seem like incredible hard work. The jars are also vast. 
there's no doubt that after the miracle, Thor would have had enough wine and rather good stuff as well. Is John not telling us that God's love is overwhelming? More than we ever need. You get the same idea in the other Gospels in the story of the feeding of the 5,000 when there's so much bread left over. Is that not our simple message to the world? Well, let's begin with ourselves. Get up every morning. Look at the mirror. Think about what lies ahead in the day, good and bad. But say, I am special because I am loved by God. It's not easy, I know. And we all have days of being down in our hearts. But keep the light shining. Just let the love flow over us. And when we meet other people, see them as people who are loved. All of us need affirmation. Not just for being talented or clever, but for just being. We flourish and grow as much as flowers in the sun. Think of those vast jars. The world seems full of negative things, but realise that love is always greater. That is our faith. I don't think we should be soppy with each other, but we should always manage to say something that builds up the other person, whether it's a smile at the checkout, or saying thank you, or complimenting someone. Let the love flow from those jars. And the same applies when we look at the world. At present, there is a danger of just giving up, seeing things as hopeless. But God's love has always made a new tomorrow. Whatever we decide, let it be based on love and peace for all, not division and destruction. Love is the victor. Also, see all the good that he's done in the world. And we've seen some plenty we've seen plenty of examples of that in the last year, haven't we? Light in a very dark place. My illustration of a Christmas cake may be trivial, but I hope we can look again at the wedding of Cana at Cana of Galilee and see how it's made up. Even better, perhaps we could just sit down quietly and in our minds put ourselves at the feast. Look at what's going on and see how exciting the new wine is and cheer ourselves up. Be as happy as the leader of the feast and the married couple must have been because we all know the overwhelming love of God. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Having heard and received God's word for us today, let us now declare our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us worship the Saviour with joy and make our prayer to our Heavenly Father. As we recall the wedding at Cana, let us too be ready to hear Christ's words. We pray that like Mary, we may both hear and listen to your word. We thank you for those who have heeded your call and through the ordained and lay ministry, teach and show us your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in these difficult times, be with all those with authority, power and influence in the world. We ask that they lead with honesty, justice and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your help in keeping us unselfish, considerate of our own safety and that of others. Help us find all the small ways of being there for people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who find these times particularly difficult through illness, financial insecurity, loneliness or hunger. We thank you for those working tirelessly to help. Be with them as they become your hands and voice in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill and for those who worry and care for them. Remembering particularly at this time, Chris Hunter, Sarah, Jean Nelson, Chris Nicholson, Annette McKenzie, Valerie Fox and Nicola. And for those in long-term care, our home communicants and those known only to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died throughout the world, for the family, friends and faithful servants of this community. For David Burford, Ian Deleuze, Norman Ray, Marjorie Tyson. And for those whose anniversary falls at this time, for Joan Clark, Ina Lee, Anne Shuttleworth, Eileen Clark, Mary Barton, Thomas Cooper, Eunice Didsbury, Alan Fallowfield, Irene Temple, Peter Jones. Comfort those who miss them. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as Mary listened to your words, make us good listeners, ready to hear and follow your will in all the small ways as well as the large. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to share God's peace with each other. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and a peace that should be no end. Dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. 
and also with you. Yes. At this point in our service in church, we would receive our collection, the offering of our financial gifts in support of the mission and ministry of God's church. As I prepare the table, take a moment to reflect prayerfully on your giving to the church in different ways. Give thanks for all that God provides and God's invitation to share that provision with others. Gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people, joined in praise and thanksgiving, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes with the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ has come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, John, Oswald and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven 
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As Christ breaks bread with us, he unfolds our story in his story. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sin, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. <coughs> Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and whose load is heavy, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble-hearted, and you will find rest for your souls. I invite you to make your spiritual communion with these words. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of, your, of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this service. Thank you to those who have taken part in different ways. Do remember and give thanks for the fellowship we have together as we journey on through these challenging times. During this period of lockdown, do all that you can to look after yourself and others by staying at home as much as possible, 
by showing acts of kindness to others where possible and praying for and loving all those who work for our NHS, those who work in our schools, other key workers. These are difficult times and we must support each other by following the rules. Whilst public worship is suspended, St Oswald's and St John's continue to be open for periods for individual prayer. Details are on the website. Thank you as always for those who support the church financially in different ways. It's much appreciated. If you'd like to make a donation in support of the church here, details will be on the screen at the end of the service. Next Sunday we will celebrate the feast of the presentation of Christ in the temple, also known as Candlemas, which will bring the season of Epiphany to a close. If we were gathering together in a church building, we would end the service by everyone lighting a candle and processing and gathering near the font, the place of our baptism, at which we would turn from Christ's birth to his passion. I invite you to have a candle with you next week at home, which you can light and take part virtually in our online candle mass procession. Now, as we come to the end of this service, we sing the hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Enjoy the rest of your day, take care, stay safe, God bless.